let's look at how to calculate the RPM and torque of simple gear trains. By the way, you can download an Excel sheet of these calculations. Links can be found in the video description for those. We're going to use the formulas ratio equals teeth of the output gear divided by teeth of the input gear. RPM output equals the RPM input divided by the ratio. And finally, torque output equals the ratio multiplied by the torque input. For example, if gear A has 8 teeth and gear B has 10 teeth, the ratio is 10 divided by 8, which is 1.25. If gear A rotates at 150 RPM, then 150 divided by 1.25 equals 120 RPM. If gear A has a torque of 20 newton meters, then 1.25 multiplied by 20 gives us 25 newton meters. This gear will rotate the opposite way to gear A. It will rotate slower because it is larger, but it will have more torque. If we add gear C with 20 teeth, the ratio is 20 divided by 10, which gives us 2. The RPM output is 120 RPM from gear B divided by 2, which gives us 60 RPM. The torque is going to be 2 multiplied by 25 Newton meters from gear B. This will give us 50 Newton meters. So this gear will rotate the same direction as gear A, but it will rotate slower because it is larger, although it will have more torque. If we were to add gear D with 8 teeth, then the ratio is 8 divided by 20, which gives us 0.4. The RPM is 60 RPM from gear C divided by the ratio of 0.4, which gives us 150 RPM. The torque is 0.4 multiplied by 50 Newton meters, which gives us 20 Newton meters. So this gear will rotate the opposite way to gear A, but it is the same size so it will rotate at the same speed and the same torque. Although this doesn't take into account any losses which we would see in the real world. So this setup lets you visualize how gears manipulate speed, torque and direction. What if we had a compound gear train like this, which has the same size gears, the same input torque and the same rotational speed? Again, links in the video description for the Excel sheet calculator for this. So, with this setup, we have four gears, A, B, C, and D, but B and C are compound. If gear A has 8 teeth and gear B has 10 teeth, then the ratio is 10 divided by 8, which is 1.25. Gear A rotates at 150 RPM, so gear B is 150 RPM divided by 1.25, which gives us 120 RPM. Gear A has a torque of 20 newton meters, so gear B is 1.25 multiplied by 20 newton meters, which is 25 newton meters. So this gear rotates the opposite way to gear A. It will rotate slower because it is larger, but it has more torque. If gear C has 20 teeth, then the ratio is 20 divided by 10, which is 2. The RPM is going to be the same as B which is 120 RPM, because these two gears are compound and share the same shaft. The torque is also going to be the same as B, so it's 25 Newton meters. This gear also rotates the opposite direction to gear A. It will rotate slower than gear A because of the size of gear B, and it will also have less torque than gear A, again because of gear B. If gear D has eight teeth, then the ratio is eight divided by 20, which is 0.4. The RPM is 120 RPM from gear C, divided by 0.4, which is 300 RPM. The torque is 0.4 multiplied by 25 Newton meters from gear C, which equals 10 Newton meters. So this gear rotates the same direction as gear A. It rotates faster, but with less torque. So we need to consider the application of the gearbox how many gears are connected, and what torque and speed we require. Okay, that's it for this video, but to continue learning about mechanical and automotive engineering, check out one of the videos on screen now, and I'll catch you there for the next lesson.
Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, as well as the engineeringmindset.com.